full wave analysis setup for waveguides. Let's focus on specifically what we're doing in this video. And in prior videos, we had sort of laid out this roadmap of different types of waveguide analysis. In this video, we're looking at the hybrid mode analysis. So there's something really challenging about this waveguide. All six field components are coupled. How on earth do we analyze this? So we're not doing the analysis here. We're setting up the equations to do the analysis. These are the six equations in a prior video we promised would be the starting point for all waveguide analysis. So we're about to set up the analysis for hybrid modes. And so this is where we start. And notice this is the form of the curl equations. They've been expanded, but we substitute in the form of the solution. So we have E naught Z, E naught Y, H naught X, and that comes from the amplitude portion of the form of a solution for a guided mode. Now from here, we're going to do something completely different than we've done in the past. So the first thing, we're gonna take these bottom two equations and solve them for the longitudinal components. So we'll come over here to equation 1c and we'll solve that for H naught Z. And we end up with this first equation on the lower left. Then next we'll go over to equation 2c and we will solve this for E naught Z. And we get the second equation here on the lower right that we're calling equation 3b. Now from there, we'll take these two equations and we'll come up to these top four equations and anytime there's an E naught Z or an H naught Z, we'll substitute in those expressions. When we do that, we will have algebraically eliminated all longitudinal components. And we end up with a set of four equations just in terms of the tangential components. Now we didn't set the longitudinal components to zero. We just simply algebraically eliminated them. This is a repeat of those bottom four equations from the last slide. And so the first two we'll look at, and we have an E naught X and an E naught Y on the right. And over here on the left, we have all magnetic fields. And these bottom two equations is the opposite. We have an H naught X and an H naught Y on the right. And on the left, we have all electric fields. It's possible to write these top two equations in a block matrix form. Similarly, it's possible to take these two bottom equations and put it in a block matrix form. So notice for equation six now, on the right, we have the two electric field components. And on the left, there's a bunch of stuff multiplying these magnetic field components. And then it's the opposite for equation seven. On the right, we have the magnetic field components. And on the left, a whole bunch of stuff multiplying the electric field components. So these are those two matrix equations from the last slide. From here, we can actually derive a matrix wave equation by combining these. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take equation seven and solve it for the magnetic field. So it's really just taking beta over to the other side. And so when we do that, here's the equation we have. Now what we can do, we have an expression for the magnetic fields. We can plug that in for the magnetic fields in equation six. Now we'll have a big matrix equation just in terms of the electric fields. And so in fact, that's the equation that we would use to do hybrid mode analysis. Now that's pretty intractable. Um, I'm sure people in the past have done this analytically. I have not, and I don't ever plan on it, but I have done this plenty of times numerically, and it's a good starting point for a numerical solution. So this is that big, ugly matrix equation on the last slide. And it turns out we can make an approximation that will simplify this considerably. And that's called quasi LP analysis. So what we have is a two by two matrix multiplying another two by two matrix. So we can multiply these two matrices together and get a bunch of big, ugly expressions. So rather than write those big, ugly expressions, I'll just call these omega XX, omega XY, omega YX, and omega YY. Now looking at this, we can now interpret physically kind of what each of these mean. And most specifically, I wanna focus on these cross terms. If we think of this first line as the equation for E naught X, 
and then the second line as the equation for E naught Y. We notice it's these cross terms that actually bring the other field component into the, into the equation. So it's these two terms that are responsible for the cross coupling of the X and Y polarizations. Now doing some analysis, do hybrid mode analysis, what you'll learn is that the modes from that are very, very linearly polarized, meaning that the cross coupling is quite weak and it becomes a good approximation, although no longer rigorous, but it becomes a good uh, approximation to just cross those off. Let's say these cross element terms are zero. When we do that, this single matrix equation, which we could not simplify further, actually becomes a set of two equations that we can solve independently for two different modes. One that's linearly polarized along X and the other that's linearly polarized along Y. So we've cut out, reduced our problem by 75%, right? Because if we're doing an analysis, let's say for EX, it's only involving omega XX. These other three quadrants of that matrix are gone, not part of that equation. So we've made it 75% smaller for almost the same accuracy. And so here's the two omegas left and an example of how big and ugly those expressions are. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for using EMPossible. I wanna create more videos and I wanna to continue to improve how electromagnetics and computation is taught online. To do that, it will really help me if you can like this video and subscribe to our channel. I also want you to know we have a lot more content that you may not be aware of. See everything we have to offer at eimpossible.net.